After photographing one World War II veteran, Thomas Sanders took a school project and turned it into a passion. Thomas realized there were many more stories to tell through photography. Thomas sat down with RPV TV station manager Mark J. Dottie to explain his artistic process. I'm here in Rancho Palos Verdes at Belmont Village photographing mainly World War II veterans and also you know, Korean and some Vietnam vets um, to help preserve their past and um, you know, really tr to really try and create a greater appreciation for all veterans and soldiers. Each photo shoot results in a permanent gallery at Belmont Village, you know, at a particular location around the country. And uh, the goal is that when people see my photographs of the World War II veterans, that they become emotionally enthralled, right? When they walk in and take a closer look, and there's a, a little piece of, there's like a quote or a, you know, a short story of that veteran right next to the photograph. And then it's kind of this, com this combining this, you know, art and history um, into the present moment. At Cal Poly, my senior year of college, I had a random homework assignment to take a portrait of somebody. And uh, just coincidentally, there, there was a retirement community around the corner from me. So I went over there and I said, you know, do you have any interesting people to photograph? You know, and they had this uh, World War II hero. And his name was Randall Harris. And he told me his battle story, how um, he was fighting in Italy and he uh, triggered an S mine and shrapnel came out and it hit him in his guts and his guts started to come out of his stomach and uh, he uh, took his canteen belt, he cinched it around his stomach and he kept fighting. And hearing that story as a you know, 21 year old in college really helped put my life into perspective. And my grandfather was in World War II and uh, his brother died during the Battle of the Bulge. And so I you know, heard all these war stories from my, from my grandpa growing up, um, but nothing like into, into deep detail, you know. And so once I photographed that first World War II veteran, it really helped put my grandfather's um, war experience and his uh, you know, brother's loss uh, really into perspective. And so I just began photographing World War II vets in my free time. And that's in you know, my book is called The Last Good War. And people always say like, why is it called, you know, no war is good and all that stuff. But it's really the one uh, war in the 20th century and really American history where there's a very clear, you know, definite good versus evil. So what do you think of this experience today, what uh, Tom is up to and in, in, in documenting the pictures? I think it's a very nice deal, very nice and elaborate. I'm, I'm amazed at all the picture taking. Have you, seen the, have you seen the result of the work downstairs? I saw, yes, on the wall, yeah. I've seen that and that's uh, very well done. They took us who had some background in Japanese so that we could then uh, be advanced to be more uh, capable in translation. So uh, yes, we had the fundamentals uh, of learning the language but not capable enough to read and then decipher or translate. And that they sent us to the military intelligence school to further our education. Where were you bef before you were en enlisted? I was uh, in the Manzanar camp. And Manzanar camp was uh, one of about 10 camps that were set up by the U.S. government when uh, President Roosevelt issued Executive, nine, uh, Executive Order 9066, which uh, forced the Japanese Americans to be incarcerated in 10 different camps throughout the United States. And we were behind barbed wires with soldiers guarding us. So we were very proud that Congress recognizes their mistake and then rewards us for what we've done. So it was kind of a kind of a makeup for all the things that we were overlooked on. Yeah, you proved them wrong. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.